guess he didn't want to do the scripture reading. <laughs> this morning I want to start you off with a, a poem entitled, From a Father to a Son on Persecution. It, it reads, When I was a child, no higher than your knee, my daddy sat me on his lap and told these things to me. Son, you must live for Christ, no matter come what may. Teach the word to the lost every single day. People will make fun of you, taunt you, and reject. Always remember what Christ endured for you, son. I beg you, never forget. Tell them that Christ loves them. Tell them you love them too. And when they spit on and beat you, have courage to tell the truth. Their souls are lost without him, and this is why Jesus needs you, to tell the truth about him no matter what they do. In the end, your sufferings will gain you a glorious crown, and if you win them to him to meet you in the sky, your sufferings will all be worth it. I tell you, son, there is no greater reason why. So always live for Christ every single day. Teach the word to all the lost, no matter come what may. This morning I want to speak to you about our comfort in suffering. Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. <coughs> Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. As Christians, if we suffer like Christ for the spread of the gospel, we have a comfort. Now, I remember when I was a young man in school, I uh, was very zealous for the Lord and the spread of his word. I would take my Bible to school every day. This was before you weren't allowed to take your Bible to school anymore. So I'm kind of giving away a little bit of my age here. In my zealousness, I never took the time to stop and think about how my need, my, my internal need to spread God's word would affect me and how I would be treated because I needed to spread his word. <laughs> it started with uh, name calling. I'm sure many of you have heard the term Bible thumper. Yes, I was a Bible thumper, apparently. Um, sometimes I was stupid, sometimes I was an idiot, and even on occasion, I was called crazy. The treatment that I had to endure only grew more and more abusive to the point of being cornered in a locker room and being pounded on by a few guys because I would not stop bringing my Bible to school and trying to teach people of God. I tell you this to tell you this, okay? Every day I would go home and find comfort in, comfort in my father, in prayer, and in the reading of his word. I am sure uh, many of you have stories of how you were mistreated because of your faith in God and how people talk down to you because all you wanted to do was share eternal life with them. We endured those trials so that we could one day use them to comfort those that are currently enduring the same sort of trials. Here in the reading that we had in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we see the Apostle Paul explaining to the church at Corinth that God is the God of comfort. It is important to know where we are to go as Christians when we need comfort. It is important as Christians to know that we can go to one another for comfort. We must always remember that, through, that though the trials we go through are tough, Christ endured more than we could even imagine. Through the suffering of Christ, we can find comfort in the trials we are going through today. We must ask ourselves as Christians, will we take solace in the comfort that we have through Christ, or will we live in complacent fear of what might happen? happen? Will we live as a, as a Christian safe on our pew, or will we go out and teach the lost no matter what we may have to endure? As Christians, if we suffer like Christ for the spread of the gospel, we have a comfort. Let us consider that God is our comfort in times of trial, and we can comfort others in their times of trial, and Christ grants us all abundant comfort through his trials. 
As children of the Lord, we must always remember, no matter what it is that we in, are enduring, God is our comfort in times of trial. But what is comfort? I don't know what it means to you, but this is what comfort is according to dictionary standards. According to the world standards, we read in dictionary.com that comfort is to soothe, console, or reassure, or bring cheer to. In the Greek, comfort is the word periklesis, which, <clears throat> according to Vine's dictionary, is a calling to one side. This is to encourage or to console. God is the God of encouragement and consolation. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3, again we read, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. But how does God comfort us? God grants us comfort through the knowledge that he is always there with us. My, one of my favorite passages growing up, and I'm sure many of yours as well, is the 23rd Psalm. Let's go ahead and read the 23rd Psalm, beginning in verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me into, in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is so comforting to me in everything that I do, and as it should be for you. He is going to be with us no matter what. God is always there with us. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 6. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 6. 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. How blessed are we as sons of God to know that our helper is the almighty creator of this world, of everything that we know. He's there for us no matter what we have to endure. And we have comfort through the word that gives us hope. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Are you having a bad day? Read God's word. It fixes everything. Yes, this, this is a tablet, but it, I'm reading God's word off of it. God comforts those that live for Christ. This is how we gain that comfort if we live for Christ. We will endure persecutions if we live for Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. Paul writes to Timothy, and Paul is sitting in prison right now for nothing more than preaching God's word. And he's waiting to be judged and killed at this time. And he writes to Timothy, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Don't be deluded in thinking that being a Christian will make it an easy life for you. You're going to go out, you're going to teach others of God's word, and people are going to persecute you for it. But we have a comfort in knowing that the Lord will deliver us. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and if you go up just a couple of verses, we'll begin in verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. The Lord will deliver us from all of our persecutions. And no matter the trial that we have endured, knowing that the Father comforts us through them all, gives us the strength, gives us strength and lets us know that we can comfort others in their times of trial as well. 
And the trials we endure for Christ gives us that ability. It gives us the ability to go and help someone who's been through the same thing as us or even talk them through something different because of the trials that we have gone through. Through the comfort we, uh, through the comfort we get from the Father, we can comfort others. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Through the comfort that we've gained from God, through the tribulations that we've been through, we can help people that are going through the same tribulation. We are told to comfort one another. This is something that we are told in the scripture to do. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. This is something that all Christians should be doing, is comforting one another. We are told to encourage one another on a daily basis, every day. Hebrews chapter 13, 3 and verse 13. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Every day is today, and every day we need to comfort one another. We can know that our suffering will comfort those that are suffering. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Our suffering's not in vain. It's going to help those that are suffering. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Our sufferings aren't all we'll get. We will get that consolation. But how can we comfort one another? We can comfort one another by reminding one another of the great day. And I hope we all know what that great day is. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Read this one with me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Again, gaining comfort from the scripture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to comfort you. One day we will be in heaven with the Lord, and with our sisters and brothers in Christ. How else can we comfort one another? We can pray for one another. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. Paul writes to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. How comforting it is to know that someone is praying for you every single day. My family and I, we thank God every day for the congregation here because we know that we're in your prayers every single day, helping us to get through school, helping us with the trials that we're going through with the sickness of our son. It's a blessing and a comfort to know that that is coming from my brothers and sisters here. We can also gain comfort through love, give comfort through love. First, or Philemon, verse 3 through 7. Almost said chapter. There is no chapters in Philemon. Philemon, verses 3 through 7. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. There's that prayer again. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. 
Just knowing of their love can give us consolation and comfort. Just knowing that you love me gives me consolation and comfort no matter what I must go through. We can comfort with a good word. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. I know you know it's true. Sometimes all it takes is that one sweet word from a brother or sister, or husband or wife or child to lift your spirits completely in a bad day. But we can also comfort one another in complete silence. Job chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. Job 2, 11 through 13. Now when Job's three friends heard all of this evil that was come upon him, they came every one of him from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spoke a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. It is important sometimes just to sit and be with someone. You don't need to say anything. Just being there can be a comfort. The Father comforts us in our times of trial, and in turn we can comfort others in their times of trial. But Christ grants us all abundant comfort through his trials. Christ suffered greatly for every single one of us, Christian and non-Christian. He suffered for all of us. But to understand completely his, his suffering, we must first understand that Jesus Christ is God. Turn with me to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him not anything made, not any, without Him was not anything made that was made. Without Christ, nothing was made. And verse 14 states, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus sacrificed a lot for us, uh, more than we could ever even imagine. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. God came down here and turned himself into one of us, a servant. And being found in fashion of, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of on a cross, an almighty, eternal being came down here and died for us. Jesus died for us. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. If we are followers of Christ, we will suffer like him. Jesus tells us this himself. John chapter 15, verses 18 through 20. Let us read what, John, what Jesus tells us himself. John chapter 15, verses 18 through 20. Jesus says, If the world hates you, Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, 
But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is no greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Paul tells us that we will suffer for Christ. Again, <coughs> excuse me. Again in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. Again we read, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. If we suffer like Christ, for Christ, we will be per- we will be comforted. We will be comforted abundantly. 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 1 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Suffering will produce a hope in us. I know it's hard to imagine, but our suffering produces hope. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Read with me, Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. They glory in their tribulations, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Through our suffering, we will enter the kingdom. Read with me Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. Acts 14 and verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. It takes a lot of tribulation for us to enter into the kingdom of God, but we have hope and we can do it. As Christians, if we suffer like Christ for the spread of the gospel, we have a comfort. No matter what comes our way, we need to remember that we suffer for Christ and his kingdom. We can know that God will comfort us in our times of trial. We can take solace in the fact that we'll be able to comfort others in their times of trial through our trials. We can know that Christ will grant us all abundant comfort in our trials through the fact that he himself endured trials. And the next time you're with a friend or doing something you enjoy, or doing something you enjoy, or with a coworker in a break room, or just sitting around the kitchen table with a family member who you know has not obeyed the gospel, let them know of the comfort you gain through Christ. It is a command of us to teach them so they hear the word as we all must. Romans 10, 17. We cannot just say it in passing. We must teach them so they do not just hear it, but listen and believe it. John 8, 24. We have to teach them that to have a comfort in, God, in Christ, they must repent, which is turning away from the life that they are currently living, yes, in sin, and turning towards a new life in Christ. Luke 13, 1 through 3. But belief and repentance are never enough. You can't just believe in Jesus and be saved. They need to know and believe that Jesus is the Son of God and confess it. They need to know it and confess it. Matthew 10, 32. To begin their walk in the comfort of Christ, they must follow the command to be baptized for the remission of sin, as we all must. Acts 22, 16. And in to ensure that they have this comfort day in and day out and until eternity, they, as we all, must walk in the light to receive a glorious crown. 1 John 1, 6 and 7 and Revelation 2, 10 teach us that. And if you have, to, if you have yet to obey these blessed commands of Christ, the waters of baptism are ready for you. You can have comfort in your walk of life. Or if you need prayers of encouragement because of a persecution you are enduring and need comfort, please come forward as we stand and sing. Shed for
for me and that thou be